I wish. But uh, so this is Aaron's kind of little storage getaway thing. This is Jason. He's working on. He has a 2J S14. He's been to. Uh, he's been to Colorado and competed in some of the like the Albuquerque events and down here in Texas all the time. And we've driven together. Yeah. A couple times, but basically, TJ VVTI CD09, very similar to my car. My car is similar to his, um, but yeah. So this is this isn't Aaron's. Isn't Aaron isn't associated with this thing? So there's like a couple guys that are kind of in the shop, and they basically build speakers together. And some people work on turbo Hondas, and this is one of Aaron's uh, like high compression SRS13s that he's had for like 12 or 15 years or something like that, and had like 20 different motors in it. Um, this is uh, another guy, he just put a 1J in this car. This is another one of uh, Aaron's cars with a uh, SR20 in it, I believe. And then he has his trailer with his Mustang. But uh, this is a cool thing we're looking at today. He, uh, he, so Aaron's kind of whole, I guess, thought process is that people, you know, build drift cars like way too, like extensive. So he bought this, uh, he bought this wrecked. 370Z in the front for a hell of a deal. <clears throat> and uh, you can see, I don't know. But yeah, you can see where it actually hit a pole. We just kind of set the hood on here just so that it wouldn't get rain in it. But uh, he kind of pushed it out, put a different core support in it. And then uh, he actually had like uh, Enthalpy do like a tune on it. And it made like 320 wheel horse or something. So his uh, kind of thought process with this car is, uh, He's gonna kind of have this as, I don't know if you'd call it like a YouTuber car, or just kind of like a car for certain people to kind of come out and uh, and drive at, at events. I believe uh, like me, Adam, Taylor Ray, uh, will be going out to the Texas events this season and kind of uh, driving this thing in his Texas Street Legal Series. Um, I think the only thing he's really going to do to this is maybe a seat, uh, coilovers, and an angle kit. Other than that, it uh, has the, like an exhaust and a couple of little things to it, but uh, I don't know, it's a it's an interesting car. Do what? You want it outside or inside? Um, I don't know. Probably get it out here. We could probably just jack it up. There's more room. But uh, I think we might end up doing. I might end up coming back down here and uh, and checking out some stuff with this later. But right now we're just kind of going to look at it and see if there's any easy way to get angle out of it. And it's crazy. Cause I've actually, I've never even driven like a 350Z or a 370Z cause the one that I parted out and I got my transmission from was like completely wrecked. But I don't, we're gonna look at this thing real quick. So this is pretty much how much angle it has, which is not really anything. And uh, yeah, that, that like follow wheel, that's like, how many degrees is that? Probably like, it's like 30, yeah. I don't know. It's pretty bad, but there's like a little metal thing in there that, that the actual like, coil like kind of bolts to you can see where's that we could have 10 degrees of toe out and then have 40 degrees of angle that thing right there so you can see where like it kind of sits in there so you essentially have to cut that off and then attempt to get a little bit more angle out of it but that's uh I don't know, if you guys know of any like reasonably priced 370z angle solutions let us know right dave because Dave's, like, the G35 is way different. You just, like, unscrew this nipple thing. But, uh, anyhow, it's, uh, the guy's home from work, so we are going to go check out that, uh, that Supra. Well, probably get the Supra. We missed it. This was, uh, I guess they did, like, a 1320 video, like, cash days there last week. Two weeks ago. Street Outlaws. Three weeks ago. Something like that. But it was right there. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to attempt, or so we're back over here at, uh, Aaron's little place where he stores his, his little toys and stuff, but uh, yes, yeah, so we're looking at the 370Z to see if there's any like cheap angle things on it. <coughs> and so, kind of tape, <coughs> giving like a, a little bit of a reference onto it to kind of see what we could get by probably just cutting those things. I don't think there's much else we could we could really do to it today. But uh, but you said if we can't get anything decent out of it, you're gonna do. We're gonna do WiseFab because it's the only thing that's less than four thousand dollars besides Power by Max. WiseFab. Yep, the WiseFab. Yeah. It'll simplify things in the end, I think. All right, so uh, looking at it underneath here, there's just bolts on. Oh, it's part.
part of the yeah, it's part of that whole deal. But see that little aluminum piece right there? That little nub, I think we could cut that off and then see kind of see kind of what it does. So this is kind of what uh, I feel kind of the max we would be able to get out of the stock angle, or the stock setup, essentially. Um, you can see that. You can see a lot of the tire kind of almost lined up right there. And then this is kind of, so you can see almost like three quarter of the tire. <clears throat> so nothing is hooked up over here. We just basically have uh, that steering stop right here. We just completely took that off of it, and then we disconnected the inner tie rod in. So the issue that we're running into is right there. So the tie rod end actually doesn't go into the rack, it basically bottoms out. And I'll show you that. So you can basically see basically bottoms out right there and then so what happens is uh, is right here on the tie rod end it won't pull the wheel any further in because the tie rod end is just too long essentially so we need the it to go further into the rack so what uh, I'll show you something on my phone so this is essentially what somebody did on the, the Z forum they, they just went ahead and cut off that little thing painted it and then right here this is what i was talking about like the the rack spacers is really common on s13 so essentially you need to space that right there exactly like that so that the actual tie rod goes further into the rack so that it'll pull more angle on it and yeah that's pretty much i guess what you can kind of get out of it but it uh does look like it will have like a lot of ackerman which means the difference so they won't be like perfectly parallel so it'll like slow it down a little bit while drifting So now we're at the community part of this whole thing, and True just made us some little tiny spacers out of an 18 mil socket. 18 mil deep set. And what we've done is, 
we've made a little spacer, which is going to lengthen this whole setup a tiny bit. Whoops. Suck this into the rack more so that we have a little bit more travel. And then you're gonna have to shorten the tie rod a tiny bit. Can't really show the tie rod. And then we've taken the stops down a little bit and hopefully it gets us a tiny bit more garbage angle out of this thing. What do you think? How many degrees do you think it's giving us? Like an extra five to seven? Six. Or an extra three? Six. Six? That's very confident. Uh, 6.2. Yeah. Somewhere in there, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll see if it has enough threads to not be sketchy this time. Because we had it a little bit longer, like that little spacer thing. Mm hmm But it's just sketchy because there's no threads going. There's like a space in the rack before it actually catches <coughs> threads. So Trevor's cool, he's a mechanic, so he does everything. We just kind of, we just stand out here and we talk about things that interest us, which are things, oddly enough, other than this. There's only room for one person down there at a time. That's my excuse. We've got some uh, toe plates here for in a minute. We're gonna, we're gonna line this stupid thing. And... Yeah, I, I think that's honestly enough. Oh, Trevor thinks it's safe now. Yeah, but I can see. Let's count. You can't hear Trevor down there, but Trevor's saying you should go to the Lone Star Drift YouTube account and definitely subscribe. That's exactly what I was saying. No, I'm joking. You don't need to do that. You already have a channel with drifting. Trevor's channel. There can only be room for one channel in your life. That drifts. Yep. Does the audience know what you came down here to do? Yeah. They know you're here to pick up a car? That was, that was probably yesterday's video or the day before's video. I'm making God, three, daily videos. I'm making three videos out of this. Jeez. You hustle this crowd. I try. Woo! Commercial break. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Something interesting is about to happen. Woo! Yeah, that's... <clears throat> kind of sketchy, but it's... It, Works, you know, if we weren't so lazy, what we should do is dyno challenge a stock 350, 370Z versus your Supra. We have to get fuel filter. Yeah, the Supra just take the fuel filter out, bypass it. That'd be hilarious, actually. It just makes a bunch of power. Since we have a dyno right there. That would be funny. At least the air compressor went off. Yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna go give him this three notes. All right. Look, it's a newer car and it still has a dipstick, thank God. Can we turn the wheel in a sec? All right, so we got, uh, got it all aligned and everything kind of where we need to, uh, where it should be. And uh, it's like an eighth degree of toe, uh, toe out. Can you go ahead and turn it all the way this way? So you can see kind of the tape on the ground is pretty much where it was. So it's a couple degrees past where it, uh, where it was essentially. You can see, but I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. Um, we could have probably got a little bit more out of it if we would have left those spacers a little bit longer. But I, the issue then is we just don't have enough threads in there to be like, I feel like safe. So this, that looks like a smidge more, but not, not. What do you think, Aaron? Looks like five degrees more. Yeah. It might, it might be enough to like maybe go drive it and kind of like play around, but not enough to like have people come and have an amazing time and not yeah. spin out and die. I don't know. I don't know. It's so, like, we drive cars with a lot of angles, so it looks weird. Yeah. What, uh, so I guess, what, what is the plan for this car? Have you... The plan for this car is to promote the Lone Star Drift YouTube channel by collaborating with all of our friends who are also drifters, and I'm sure they all want to freeload off of me and drive this wonderful car. Yeah. So I'm utilizing my friendship with YouTubers that are bigger than me so that I can build the Lone Star Drift channel so I can use that to distribute all my driver's content. So like um, the Slide Life crew just went to Japan and they sold a video um, and got a bunch of sponsorship money for it and then they're gonna distribute it on the Lone Star Drift channel. And if they didn't have the ability to do that, um, they would not probably have gotten that money because they would not have the ability to distribute the video to any type of audience you know like mm. I think their channel has 350 subscribers yeah to maybe 400 I'm not quite sure but you know and what are you at now I don't know like 20 some thousand I think I think like 35,000 yeah 
So you're, um, do, you're doing decent. So we're doing bigger, but um, I can only produce content so fast because this isn't really something I get paid to do. Mm -hmm. um, I run a racing series, so that's what I concentrate on. And off during the off season, I should have plenty of time to make some videos, but like, how many videos do you make a year? I don't know, I'd say like at least 100. At least yeah. like 150 maybe, somewhere in there? I make maybe about 50 to 60, and I think you need to make more like 150 to mm -hmm. make your channel grow and everything. Yeah, I think like I one really or two a week. Rate. Yeah, I don't so, make one or two a week. So essentially like, you guys like Adam and Taylor and me and a couple other YouTube guys will come down here and kind of compete in the TX uh, SL, which is a street legal series. Yep. And uh, pretty much a stock 370Z, and uh, kind of your point of that whole series is to get people to quit building cars like that and yep. like the ones outside that don't run and more like the ones that's in your trailer, which is your Mustang, yep. which you beat the crap out of for like, is it a year now or has it been two years? Three years, I think. You didn't have it for a while. I right? didn't have it for a year. I sold it to a buddy of mine, yeah. Aaron Smith, but he beat the crap out of it, like just driving it through dirt fields and stuff. But yeah, like that car and this car should, like you should be able to just sit there, pin to the rev limiter and beat the bejesus out of this thing and it just doesn't break. Um, so the last thing you want to do is have everybody fly in to drive the thing and then the car doesn't run. Yeah. And if something does break on it, it has a code reader, hopefully it's easy to figure yeah. it out and just go buy a part at AutoZone or the Nissan dealership and get it back like going. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And hopefully the AC, well, the AC probably won't work, huh? Because you, AC it got crunched. Works. AC currently works beautifully. Oh, wow. the AC condenser didn't get crunched? It did, we fixed it. Yeah, it's Oh, fixed. nice. And you guys charged it? Yep. Yeah. It blows ice cold, start it up. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's cool. Although I'm probably going to put a bigger radiator in it because I hear these things overheat and go into lint mode pretty easily. Yeah. So. yeah. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this little, uh, I guess, 370Z angle thing. Uh, was it worth it? I don't know. I, we, we haven't really driven it uh, really too much before or after the car isn't, uh, you know, isn't currently registered, so it's kind of sketchy driving around here because uh, I guess people are are semi-belligerent and, uh, and the cops like this area. So not gonna take it for a drive and test it out, but uh, Aaron is has kind of a road course day planned out here within the next, I don't know, maybe month or so. So I might be coming down here and uh, and kind of driving it then, which uh, I'm pretty stoked because like I said, I've never really even driven a 350Z, let alone a 370Z. Um, he has the tune on this thing and it made like 320 to the wheels, um, which I think will be pretty, you know, be plenty for drifting. But uh, it'll be just really cool to, to try out like a new chassis, see how well it uh, it actually drives, you know, just being uh, being a new chassis. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, that's going to be it for this one. And uh, we're going to get uh, back on the road back to Colorado.